I'm going to read a scripture passage this morning from Proverbs chapter 30. And I think it's one of these passages in the book of Proverbs that maybe we don't normally focus on so much. Uh, and most of the Proverbs are written by, um, by King Solomon. But here's a short pro- uh, Proverbs in Proverbs 30 written by someone by the name of Agar. And so I'm going to read the first nine verses of Proverbs 30. Hear then the word of God. The sayings of Agar, son of Jacob, an inspired utterance. This man's utterance to Ithiel. I am weary, God, but I can prevail. Surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained the knowledge of the Holy One, who has gone up to heaven and come down, whose hands have gathered up the wind, who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak, who has established all the ends of the earth. What is his name? And what is the name of his son? Purely you know. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. Do not add to His words, or He will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. And so far then, the reading of God's word. Dear people of God, author Hugh Cook tells an interesting story in his book, Cracked Wheat, about a college student named Neil Van Wyck who takes on a summer job of delivering bread for a bakery. And the story tells how Neil gets to know a customer on his bread run. And one day this woman asked Neil if he's a relief driver with the bakery. And he answered that, no, this was his summer job, that he was a student. And so he did this for summer work. Well, where do you go to school, the woman asked. He told her that he attended a a church-related college in the States in a pre-seminary program. And the woman then gave a startling reply. Well, delivery man or minister, either way you give people bread, right? Now that reply got Neil thinking. He often felt that he was living in in two different worlds. The world, the abstract world of school, his education, and then the busy work of his bread run that was paying for his education. But this customer's profound statement reminded Neil that all of life is really a holification, that all of life is really part of our calling for God in this world, that one's spirituality and one's physical work are actually to be interwoven at all times in our lives. Now, as part of our service this morning, we're going to pray for God's blessing on our human efforts toward this year's crops, but also the industry and in this country and our world and and a number of other things. And it's really our way of acknowledging the intimate connection between the physical and the spiritual realms of our lives. Now our custom for taking time for prayer at spring seeding time and after the harvest actually goes back to an era when most people were in our society were involved in agriculture. And in previous generations, people felt blessed 
when they had received a sufficient food supply again for another season. Now, that time is past in the sense that feeding ourselves on a daily basis is only a small part of our personal or family budgets. Now, that's not to say that we should not take time for uh, for God, or, or that we should now take time for, for God's providing hand, that we should take that for granted. God forbid that. We need to continually remind ourselves that the whole process from seed to crop, the cycle of the, of the seasons, the gifts of rain and sunshine, that all these things are the works of God and not that of mother nature as some people like to say in our society we need to humbly pray for our God to our God for these gifts recognizing that God may take away tomorrow what we take for granted today our prayer for crops is never outdated and still it's only fitting that our prayers also address the economy of our business world But to pray for the economy represents a big bag of items that most of us don't even always understand. To pray for an improved economic condition, well, that in itself can be somewhat vague. And it's because our society is so complex, it's important that we as Christians take this time for prayer like this, and and probably that we would do something like that on a more regular basis. You see, God is not only a God of the farm, but God is also a God of the the computers and the robots of our business world. God doesn't get lost in the complexities of our economy. God is above and beyond even the most up-to-date technology. Now, our text from Proverbs 30 very beautifully reminds us that we serve a God who knows and controls even those things of our world beyond our understanding. The book of Proverbs focuses a lot on the theme of wisdom. And the book of Proverbs continually reminds us that the person is wise when they trust in God, while the fool says there is no God. Now, we live in a society where many people live and work as if there is no God. People like to think that they are in charge of their own destiny. And whether we eat or go hungry, whether we work or go jobless, well, that all depends on us. It depends on our own sense of diligence or or maybe a lack of effort on someone's part. And whether someone is rich or poor, well, of course, that depends on our own initiative or or our use of our own brains you know for us as Christians we can all too easily fall into that same way of thinking it's not that difficult for us to confess with our lips that we trust in God above all in our lives that we confess our, our prayerful dependence on God in all things in our lives We can easily say that with our lips. Now, at Sunrise Church, you have chosen that to be one of the top core values as a church, a prayerful dependence on God. Yet, there again, all too easily, we can rely more on our own human ingenuity in our daily living. For all of us, there's even times in our lives where it's almost as if God has little to do with the day-to-day activities of our lives. Now, Agur, the divinely inspired author of, of Proverbs 30, reminds us that we are not masters of our own destiny. Verse 5 says, God is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. Now, it doesn't say that those who trust in God will will automatically become successful or prosperous in their lives. It only says that God will provide for those who trust in Him. 
As Jesus himself says in Matthew 6, verse 33, Jesus says, seek first God's kingdom, and God will see to it that all your needs are provided for, that you'll have sufficient food to eat, and there will be ample clothes in your closet. Now, I I think most of us are familiar with the words that Jesus teaches us in a prayer commonly known as the Lord's Prayer. You know how the words go. It starts with the words, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then the next line, the next petition has these words. Give us this day our daily bread. Now that line of the Lord's Prayer actually fits nicely with Agar's prayer in verse 8, where Agar prays, Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Now, both of these prayers then ask God, our Heavenly Father, to provide for us our daily supply of of food in our lives. And it helps to notice what what precedes the, the petition for daily bread in both of these prayers. In the Lord's Prayer, the petition for bread follows the petition for obedience. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, our daily bread does us no good if it costs us our obedience to God. Life is not merely about the things that we put into our mouths, as as our world tends to think. We have true life only when we hear and listen To God speak to us in His Word when we do what God tells us in His Word. That's what Agar implies in verse 5 of our text. It's something that the Old Testament Israelites repeatedly forgot throughout their history. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, God shows Israel His purpose for letting them wander for 40 years in the desert. God tells them in Deuteronomy 8 that God did this to remind the Israelites that they were to put their full trust in God at all times in their lives. And they were to trust in God for their daily food supply. And as a way of reminding them that, God sent them a heavenly daily bread supply of manna in the desert. He didn't send that, here's a week at a time. No, it was one day at a time. They learn to rely on God to provide for them on a daily basis. And it was to remind the Israelites that they could not live on physical bread alone. That they had to trust in every word that comes from the mouth of God as Deuteronomy 8 verse 3 says. And so what that meant for the Israelites was that their physical well-being was never first and foremost dependent on the work of their own hands. As Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, a little further in that chapter says, it says, Remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. How relevant that is for us still today with our modern machinery and our modern technology be that on the farm or in the business world. And notice then what, what, what precedes Agar's prayer for daily bread. In verse 8, Agar prays that God may keep falsehood and lies far from him. In other words, he prays that he may, that he may be honest and authentic in his relationship with God, but also with his neighbor. He prays that he might not speak through both sides of his mouth. That he might not claim to trust in God with his lips and yet live completely the opposite. That he might not claim to love his neighbor and yet live only for himself. What Agar does is pray for a loyalty and truthfulness to honestly assess his own need but also the needs of other people around him. And it is in that context, in the next breath, that Agar prays for God to give him neither poverty nor riches, but only enough for his daily bread. Now let me ask you this. When is the last time 
that you prayed for God to not give you more money than you can handle. When's the last time that you prayed, Lord, may my farm, my business, or my bank account not become too big for me to handle? Lord, may I not become too successful in my life that I become so self-reliant that I don't think, that I assume I don't need you, Lord God, in my life. That I no longer depend on God for the things in my life. That's the prayer that Agar offers to God. Because Agar knows himself well enough that too much wealth would lead him to, to put too much trust in his own money and material resources. And he knows himself well enough that that could lead to the possibility of him forgetting or even disowning God in his life. Agar was well aware of the principle that Jesus later teaches in Matthew 6, verse 24, that a person cannot serve both God and money. And still Agar prays for just enough food that he doesn't have to resort to stealing for his daily food supply. Because he knows that that would also bring dishonor to God. And so as we, in a few moments, will pray for crops and industry in our country and our world and a number of other things, let's pray for a desire to honor God's name throughout our daily lives. Let's pray, pray with agar for God to deliver us from a selfish and greedy spirit that ignores the people in our community or the world around us. That we pray for the wisdom to be good stewards. That we neither pollute nor waste the resources that God has entrusted to us in His creation. There's, there's a song in one of our older hymnals. You, some, a number of you might remember the old gray hymnal. There's a song in there that goes like this. And I've asked to have the words put on the screen. Here's the song. It's like a prayer. It says, give us this day our daily bread. This is our prayer. If by grace you give us more than our daily bread, Lord, help us to share. Use us to show in word and deed compassion to a world in need. As you have loved us, help us, Lord, your love to share, that we may tell of living bread, of Jesus Christ, whose blood was shed, that hungry people might be fed. It's no small thing for us to pray for God to bless our human efforts, to make the earth yield its fruit. And I think we often pray more urgently when we find ourselves in a pinch in our lives. And with the challenges of an ever-increasing inflation in our country these days, this only reminds us that we need to be more dependent on God for all of our daily needs. It helps us to be more realistic about our true needs in relation to all the extra things that we often take for granted in our lives. So let's keep our prayers simple. May God give us enough money to pay our bills and our taxes while still doing our part to give generously to Christ's church and for the advancement of God's kingdom into this world. And let's pray also for the spiritual wisdom to keep our hearts from falsehood as we strive to keep our lives in proper perspective, that we pray and work at the same time, that we pray and work with the health and strength that God gives us, that we live with the assurance that our Heavenly Father will provide for all of our needs as we prayerfully put our trust in Him. And may we have the mind of Christ 
to share with each other the abundance of all our resources that come from God's gracious provision in the first place. And that we do it all in response to God's gift of grace and love for us in Jesus, who gave up everything for us on the cross to provide for all our spiritual, physical, and emotional needs. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we confess that it's a whole lot easier to say with our lips that we fully depend on you than to live that out in practice. We admit that it's all too easy for us to depend on our own resources and to think that we can provide for ourselves in our daily living. Forgive us for putting our trust in our farms or our businesses or our ever-increasing bank accounts or financial portfolios. We need your grace And your mercy that you make available to us in Jesus, who so graciously gave up everything for us in his death on the cross. Help us to embrace that gift of grace. And help us to respond with Agar's prayer. That you give us neither poverty or riches, but to simply trust in you to provide for all our daily needs. Help us also, Lord God, to be more generous and sharing our God-given blessings for those in need, and to, and to share our blessings for the work of your church and for the spread of your kingdom into this world. And so we pray this in the name of Jesus, our precious Savior. Amen.